We're going to take a look at lessons four and five here in module three together. They're incredibly similar. Uh, they actually are exactly the same with one exception, and that exception is that uh, module or lesson four deals with uh, your six facts and lesson uh, five deals with your seven facts. But the strategy we're talking about is exactly the same, so we can cover it here uh, all in one video. So and we're going to talk about skip counting, which you're probably saying to yourself, like, Mr. Brunel, what are you talking about? We know how to skip count. Uh, but I want to show you a little bit more in depth about um, skip counting with these numbers that are they're a little bit more challenging to skip count with. So even if I were skip counting, I have to think harder when I'm skip counting by six or seven than I do if I'm counting by two or uh, four, five, uh, ten, uh, any of those numbers. So I really have to think a lot more when I'm doing my sixes or my sevens, and you will too. And uh, this lesson spends a lot of time at working on. Uh, you remembering those numbers, uh, developing a, a more secure understanding of uh, all the numbers that are in each set. So like the six, all the six uh, you know, times tables, you know, solutions, uh, same with the sevens. And it, it, we're going to walk through in the homework especially, uh, and we'll do a little bit in class, but it definitely comes up in the homework of how to solve those if you don't know. And, and you might say to yourself, well, I can always just count on six more because uh, that is true, and, and we've used that strategy before, but there are other ways to solve too. So uh, I've talked enough. Let me just go ahead and show you what I mean. Uh, you're going to start out by saying like 0 plus 6 equals 6. So that's your first factor in your, sec your, your, your first one and your second one. Um, we'll keep a, a running list over here. 0, 6. Now you're going to add 6 more. So now you say 6 plus 6. Now most of you probably already in your head said 12, but say you didn't know it was 12. What this lesson is going to ask you to do is to break apart one of these uh, two things that are being added together to make a 10. So we're going to break this into a 4 and a 2. And then we're going to circle this 6 and this 4 to make a 10, to make it 10 plus 2 equals 12. So we have a 12 over here. Well, the next one, we take our 12 right here, and we're going to add 6 to it. So 6 plus 12. And again, you can use that same strategy. You find whatever one you're going to be able to make a 10 with. And in this case, it's it's easier to break apart the 12 and, uh, and make a 10 with the 6. Actually, it doesn't really matter. It's probably easier to do this. Um, either way, you can do it. Let's break this into a uh, 4 and an 8. We can do it that way. I suppose we could have broken the six into a, a two and a four, it wouldn't have mattered. So now we have our uh, six plus four is 10. So that goes over there, plus eight equals 18. And so we can add 18 to our list. We then take our 18 plus six, and we'll figure that out. And again, if you already know these, that's wonderful. If you don't, this is a really great way to help you solve them. It's a good strategy. Uh, the 6 can be broken apart into a 2 and a 4 because that 2 can be combined with the 18 to make a 20. And so we end up with 20 plus 4 equals 24. So you're uh, breaking apart one of the numbers, decomposing it, uh, and then creating a 10, whether it's a 10, a 20, a 30, a 40, whatever, a multiple of 10. And then you're adding that whatever that multiple of 10 is to whatever's remaining from the thing you broke apart. So that's how you do it with your sixes. We could keep going. Uh, you'd find out that the sentence is 30, 36, 42, 48, 54. See, I had to think there for a minute. Uh, 60, and that gets you all the way up to 10. Let's do it with sevens. Same strategy. So we know the first one's always zero and then seven. Uh, so now I have 7 plus 7. I'm starting with my third one. Well, I can break this one into a, a 3 and a 4. And uh, the why I know to do that is because I know that I need 3 more with my 7 to make a 10. So 7 plus 3 is 10. Plus 4 more is 14. Now I take my 14 and I add seven more to it because each step along the way, we're just adding seven more or in the last case, uh, on the last page, we're adding six more. Okay. Um, I'm going to add, I know that four and six makes 10. 
So I'm going to make this a 6 and a 1. So 7 is the same as 6 plus 1. 14 plus 6 is 20. Plus my 1 more is 21. I can then take 21 plus 7. In this case, I'm going to take 1. From, I'm going to take this and turn it into a 20 plus a 1. Uh, I now have my 10, you see I have my 10 there, my 20. So then I combine the seven and the one to make an eight. So I end up with 20 plus eight. And again, that 20, I created by taking one away from it. So sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes it's not, it's, it's actually more of like a, um, taking something away from something that's like a 20, 21, taking one away uh, and giving it to the eight in order to make a multiple of 10. I now have 28 plus seven. I could break this seven into a, a two and a five. Notice I, I thought carefully about which one I was gonna put on the left and the right, uh, just because it makes it easier now to see that I can combine my two and my um, 28 to make a 30, and then have five left over to add to it to get 35. It still works if I put it, like if I had flipped these and put the five on the left and the two on the right, but it's not as neat in terms of being able to circle it. So uh, think a little bit ahead as you're doing this work uh, so that you can uh, make it as clear as possible. So let's, let's fill in the rest of these, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, 70. So we could continue going with this process as you will in your homework uh, and go through all of these numbers. And that sort of counting by sixes and sevens is the main point of these two lessons. It's, it's really the, the entire point of these two lessons. Everything that you do uh, is going to be tied back in some way to uh, your the, the six sort of fact families and the seven facts families. Uh, you will, let's, let's talk about one more thing um, that's, that's tied into this. You might have a problem that says, um, oh, I don't know, let's see. Um, Owen says to answer, I don't know, seven times six, whoops, seven times six, you count by sevens six times. Um, uh, Aria disagrees and says that to solve this problem, you need to count by six, seven times. Who's right? And why? That and why part's always important because if I just said who's correct, you could just list the name and that would be the end of it. But the and why means you need to explain your thinking. And as you know, I always expect you to explain your thinking. Uh, and so you, you're, this is like a really classic type of problem in our math program. You, we get this sort of stuff a lot where you compare the way the two kids think about things, which is, which is great because we do that a lot in class too. Like we, we talk about our answers and we compare how kids think about things. So uh, this fits right in with how we operate in class. Uh, and in this case, uh, you know, uh, pause and think about the, you know, you pause the video and think about it for a minute if you want to, but uh, they're both correct. Uh, counting by six, seven times is the same as counting by seven, six times. This shows the commutative property. They're, they're turnaround facts. I'm listing words that you'd have in your, uh, in your, in your answer when you're explaining your thinking. Six times seven equals seven times six. So it doesn't matter if you count by sixes or if you count by sevens in this case. Uh, you could do it either way and do it correctly. Uh, so I just want to introduce you to that because that's something that we're going to see. Uh, I believe we see it in uh, lesson five. And uh, I know that it comes back over and over. It's something that we talk about uh, in, in, one, in one way or another uh, a few more times throughout the, the course of the year. So I want to make sure that we touch on it here. All right, guys, uh, let's get practicing counting by sixes and counting by sevens here in 
lessons four and five. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know.